I want you to consider for a moment how many hours a day you spend looking at electronic screens. That's a lot, right? Probably too many, more than you would really like. But many of the most important activities in our life rely on these little windows into our digital world. I want to convince you that the true potential of our mobile devices will only be realized when we release them from the restrictions of today's display technology. And then I want to show you how I think that might be done. So this is the new paradigm of how we consume and create. But there's a lot of ways that we could improve how we interact with these devices. If you've ever gone outside on a sunny day and tried to send a text message or an email, you know what I mean. The reason you can't really see the image on your screen is because these display technologies are what we call emissive. That means that they output light to make an image on the screen. Now, that means that when you're outside using your smartphone, it's competing to be brighter than the sun. So, but even if you go inside an office building, let's say, your device is still using a lot of energy outputting light when there's plenty of light all around us. This seems kind of silly, right? Well, we think so. Because the mobile display remains one of the most inefficient components of mobile device technology, and that means bigger batteries and lower usability. Now, this is what we think of when we think of the future. This isn't a real device, but there's a good reason that you haven't seen anything like this. Mobile display technology today is fragile, and it's made of really exotic components. And they just cannot be manufactured on anything but rigid glass. But if we could make a truly flexible, durable display, you could say goodbye to cracked phone screens and hello to some really cool devices. Now, sorry, <laughs> I want to go forward. Uh, what, can we, what can we replace this technology with? Well, how about paper? You know, let's think about the qualities of paper. It's flexible. It gr looks great in almost any use condition. And it uses no power except the ambient light around us. The only problem is it's static. You can't interact with it. If we could solve that issue, we could begin to make the smartphones and tablets of our dreams. Now, many of you have probably used a device similar to this, uh, which uses a technology called e-ink. And I have a Kindle, and I love it for reading black and white text. But you'll also probably know that it's no replacement for magazine, full-color magazines, and certainly no replacement for video on your smartphone. You know, so e-ink is a really great technology for a specific application. But my colleagues and I at the Novel Devices Laboratory at UC think we can do much better and start to bring e-paper to new markets outside of just the e-reader regime. And so my work is at, has focused on creating technology to go into displays that not only look like paper, are flexible like paper, but are highly interactive. So every great idea starts with a little handmade artisanship. And this is our first attempt at taking ink, literally inkjet printer fluid, and changing its area using electronics. And so what we're doing here is hiding the fluid inside a small reservoir and then using an electric field to pull it out and expose it to the viewer. And that, in that way, we can make a contrast change. And if this demonstration leaves you a little bit skeptical, that's OK, because let me show you a picture of the first transistor out of Bell Laboratories. <laughs> yeah, now, now we're putting billions of these on little tiny chips that are inside your, your phones. So the really great thing about our technology is that just like transistors, as it gets smaller, its performance goes up. So now we're creating devices with thousands of pixels uh, on screen that's, that are displaying meaningful information, which is really great. And by using really efficient reflectors and compacting the fluid down to smaller, smaller spaces, we're creating things that look more like paper than anything that's come before. 
And by using the power of microfluidics, this stuff can be really fast, and that means video on paper. And by, taking, by, by using methods to create these out of uh, inexpensive polymers and really, really thin, we can make these on flexible backplanes, which means we have the ult ultimate in portability and flexibility. So what does all this mean for you? Well, imagine going in anywhere with your smartphone, unfolding it, and working on a full-size display. One device would be fantastic. We think that this is the future. And we think we have the right idea to get there. Now, the display technology development road is, is long and arduous, but through commercialization, we think that we can take the next great step in how we engage and interact with our devices. Thank you.